Hey guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. It is time for our weekly shop tour. I know that we didn't have a shop tour last week and I'm very sorry, but my video guy, who's also the guy behind the camera here, felt like he needed to take a week off to go on vacation for spring break with his kid. I can't blame him. So, but we are back. Uh, last week was St. Patrick's Day. So, hope you guys had a good St. Patrick's Day. Here we are now, March 24th, and we are, I would say the weather is, it's a bit of a nasty day today in Topeka, but the weather's changing. We, we've seen 70s, we're going to see some nice weather next week, getting ready to go to the races. So we kind of have two weeks of stuff to talk about um, for the shop tour, so let's kind of get right into it. <clears throat> a couple things on the bench here initially as long as I don't trip over my engine stand This is David Bednarz's F production Miata engine um, Kind of putting it all together cleaning some parts Getting the cylinder head ready and cams and bits and pieces the crank is in the pistons and rods are in Just getting everything else going right now This obviously is not his crankshaft, but what I wanted to show you guys and this is a common problem. So this is a, a Miata crankshaft out of a 1.8. The 1.8 snouts and the 1.6 large nose snouts all kind of look the same. But what happens to these, and you'll see there's a wear mark right here and that's dark. The crank damper only slides onto these cranks about this far. And if that bolt comes loose, what happens is the keyway starts to wobble just like that and next thing you know you have a crankshaft if you can if you get really closely here you can see the difference in the width between right here and right here look how look how worn out this is right here so this crankshaft is scrap metal and this is super 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 common in all Miatas, whether it's the 1.6 B6 engines or the 1.8 BP motors. If you're doing a timing belt uh, project on your Miata, double double check, get out of light and look really closely at your keyway. Um, there are some fixes out there. I've seen guys epoxy these, slam it all back together and red Loctite it down and plan on never taking it apart again. I guess for a street car that you're planning on getting rid of, you could do that. That's kind of a used car dealer trick, I probably. But when you're when you're doing high performance engines like I am, something like this is non-usable now. So got to get a new crankshaft for this engine, and we'll move forward. Just uh, kind of a tip of the day. So let's keep moving our way around this direction. <clears throat> you guys have been watching. You probably recognize this transmission. This is one of the transmissions out of the Cadillac Trans Am car. So the other thing that you'll you'll know about if you've been watching us is how much trouble we've been having with drive shafts. Well, the saga continues, and there's actually a long story about what's going on with these front CV jointed drive shafts. It appears that it, the chassis may have potentially been misadjusted at some point before we got it and under compression with the rear end moving up and down depending on the track that you're at you could overextend or underextend that CV joint causing overheating anyway this transmission had a bit of a failure in the drop gear section you can see the wear on where this drop gear runs in the bear in the front bearing so what's been happening is the CV joint that sits here at the back of the transmission has been failing and heating up when that happens it doesn't want to rotate when it doesn't want to rotate and you've got an 850 horsepower engine that does want it to rotate what's gonna give something right here in the middle so apparently there's a broken gear inside of this transmission. Um, so we'll be taking this apart here, hopefully in the next week, figure out where our failure point was. But we have a bigger issue, guys. 
in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. It was a really, really chilly weekend. I wasn't there, uh, but Steve was there with the Cadillac. And with cold tires, he had himself a bit of an accident. The car went into the concrete, spun around, got hit by another car. I don't know the whole story. However, the car is currently at Tony Ave's shop in North Carolina getting the front clip taken off of it because the whole front end got tweaked. So we are not going to be seeing the Cadillac in the shop probably for the next, I'd say, six to eight weeks would be my guess. But uh, fortunately, we have lots of other things to do. So let's move on. New car in the shop this week. Uh, had, a, had a new customer call asking about a Miata for endurance racing. And we found this NC MX-5, which was set up for WRL Racing, um, which is the World Racing League, which is uh, kind of one of the big uh, amateur uh, endurance championships. And this particular car apparently won a championship last year. So it's actually a pretty nice car. It's got a really nice aim set up in it, fast um, refueling and all sorts of good stuff. So I'm just kind of getting it all set up, getting it checked over, making sure that it looks okay, getting all of the old decals off so that we can turn it into what he wants it to be. And a couple weeks, it'll be going off to its first race, which is actually gonna be at the new Ozark track in Missouri. And I'll be taking the car for that and actually driving with another uh, guy, buddy of mine, to get a good look at this new Ozark track, so that'll be cool. Did get a new engine in here, guys. This is a Honda B20. So this is a little project that I'm working on for a customer that also wants to go endurance racing. Not exactly sure what chassis he wants to put this in yet, but we've got one of our, uh, this is actually a cylinder head off of a B18C1. We'll put it on this B20 block. Big bore should make lots of power very reliably. So this is something that I'm gonna start working on pretty soon. In the meantime, getting really close on Mike's, Mike Sturm's car. Finally got all of the new brakes in. All of the front brakes are in. Now these are Will Woods compared to the Stoptex. I actually compared the brake pad um, dimensions and they are identical to the stop techs. So I don't see any detriment at all to running this kit. And as a matter of fact, there's a little bit more clearance between this caliper and your standard N-key wheel. So we have a little bit of an advantage there, which might actually be a good thing. We won't have to run quite as much wheel spacer depending on the wheels that you're running. So that's a good thing. Over here, we've got some wheels and tires for the endurance car. So these guys have to run 200 treadwear tires. These are the reins, I guess. These are the dries. Uh, this is a new set that I got, but you know, I I'm so used to running on slicks. I have driven on tires like this. They do drive quite a bit differently but it is pretty amazing how much traction you can get out of a good 200 treadwear tire. So uh, just kind of getting prepared with a spare transmission down here for the car. Just kind of getting prepared for his uh, debut weekend here in a couple of weeks. So that's what we're working on there. Did finally get a new nose for Brian Laughlin's MX-5. Um, been kind of waiting on some bits and pieces, still waiting on a headlight. You can see we've got some new fender pan inner fender panels and clips and bolts and bits and pieces. Haven't really hit this car super hard yet because I've had some uh, other projects that have been a little more in demand. Getting real close to really hitting this car pretty hard. We'll also get Mike's car done here pretty quick. And then, of course, what are we going to have? Another changeover in the shop, like always. So. Also, and I know it's been a couple of weeks since we've talked about it, I am completed with the wiring project on Eric's car. Everything is done, the car is running, and so the only thing we really have left to do is he was integrating his aim dash into the CAN system coming out of the Haltech. 
and then uh, I think we're just about ready to get on the dyno. So with the race about four weeks away now, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. I don't know that he has a whole lot more on his uh, to-do list for, uh, for the winter. So we're looking really good. Cars running, kind of go from there. That's kind of where we're at, guys, in between lots of engines coming in and getting disassembled and inspected and off to the machine shop and ordering parts and pieces, which has always, you know, a big problem these days, getting, getting the necessary parts and pieces and equipment and everything that we need to build these race cars and racing engines. It's a little bit of a struggle these days, more so than it was like two years ago, but uh, we're pushing through, um, keeping after it and looking forward to some nice weather. I yeah, hope you guys have had a great week. We're doing good here. I uh, can see the warm weather coming. And uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate all your guys' comments on some of the other videos as well. If you haven't checked any of those out, there was actually uh, one that dropped last week. We did not have a shop tour, but we did have a video drop about safety wiring, proper safety wiring bolts, and some trick tips and tricks and techniques uh, when it comes to safety wiring things properly so make sure you check that out in the meantime thanks for watching the shop tour guys hope you're doing well see you next week